Elvis by the name of Alfred Russell Wallace, wrote Charles Darwin an astonishing letter. For eight long years, the letter told Darwin, Alfred had lived in the vast jungles of the Malay archipelago, collecting over 125,000 specimens of hitherto unknown plants and animals. He had covered over 14,000 miles by foot and dugout canoe, and finally had fallen ill with fever. Tossing in his hammock one night, he had a sudden flash of insight. I saw at once, Wallace recollected, that the ever-present variability of all living things would furnish the material from which, by the mere weeding out of those less adapted to the actual conditions, the fittest alone would continue the race. The 20-page manuscript that accompanied his letter detailed a theory of natural selection operating to ensure the survival of the fittest. This theory exactly paralleled something that Darwin himself had secretly been working on, but had abandoned so that he might complete his book on barnacles. Thus, alone in his jungle cabin, 35-year-old Alfred Russell Wallace, an enthusiast of Malthusian economics and natural history, had come up with a theory that would turn mankind's self-image upside down. Alfred Russell Wallace had come up with the theory of evolution. This is not his story. There once was this cat named Mendel, and old Mendel was a monk. He started out as a teacher, but thought that the theories he taught were junk. So he went off to study inheritance, how our traits get passed along. Wondering why all babies are born with a nose, while an elephant's born with a trunk. Before then a fellow named Darwin had created quite a stir When science tried to explain how reptiles with scales became mammals with fur But the source of their variation, well no one was really sure Because nobody knew just what sperm and eggs do and why some traits And new combinations A new mutated allele can appear Bombarded by radiation Cell differentiation Can lead to complications that appear And you suddenly find that you're not the same kind And your ancestors look mighty queer is here, evolution is near, but it's nothing to be. Not long ago, Dr. Watson and his colleague named Dr. Crick tried to explain what makes up DNA and makes all of us living things tick. Herring at the mean with thymine and guanine with cytosine. They came up with a double helix and a way to transform our gene. With new genetics and if recombination gives you palpitations, you'd better catch up with the scene transforming gene. Now we have Leo Wilson's sociobiology Suggesting our cultural differences stem from our phylogenetic tree Only 1% of our genome has changed since the chimpanzee We're still ruled by our predispositions and desire for posterity It 
it's all genetics genes it's all genetics genes